I just got this marvel of Apple engineering. Apple MacBook Pro 16 inch, it's an amazing machine. I set it up and almost immediately it disappointed me. Um, first of all, it keeps crashing. Every time it goes to sleep mode, it never comes back without a crash report. Number two, it keeps making this high frequency hissing sound. Um, let me show you. This may sound like a background noise, it's not. It's completely silent in this room. And finally, its performance is a far cry from what it was supposed to be. Just look at these numbers. 843 in the single core test and around 6300 in multi-core. If you check the Geekbench browser for this specific model, you'll see that the average for the CPU is supposed to be around 6652 mark in the multi-core test and close to 1100 in the single core test. That's approximately 23% higher in the single core test comparing to this laptop. And I started looking for a possible solution to these problems and I found that I'm not alone. There are a lot of people complaining about the performance and the hissing sound and crashes. And look at this Mac rumors thread. You got more than 300 posts from people complaining about the very same thing. And while reading this thread, I found this guy and he claims that he got lucky and he got a MacBook Pro that can put out 7100 on multi-core test. So I started looking at Geekbench reports and <laughs> look what I found, look at this guy. He got 7200 in multi-core test and 1232 in single core test. This is ridiculous. This is not fair. Why? Why life is so unfair? Why some people are getting amazing computers like this one and while others getting complete lemons? Well, let's ask the lucky guy. I happen to know him. It's me. I'm the lucky guy. And I've got these amazing benchmarks from this very same laptop. So what's going on? Let's figure out, guys. Well, the first problem was the easy one. Apple admitted that they screwed up, they released an update, then they admitted they screwed up with the update and they released the second one, and... Four updates later. And this problem is still not resolved, but there is a workaround. I went to System Preferences, and then to Energy Saver Settings, and disabled both automatic graphics switching and power nap. And I did that both for the power adapter and for the battery mode. And then after I close this window, this laptop works just fine, it goes to sleep, it sleeps well, it wakes up well rested and uh, it doesn't crash since then. So problem solved. Now let's talk about this high pitched noise. Uh, it's called coil wine, and uh, shame on me, I actually didn't know this term until I got this laptop, even though I've heard this sound before. Um, I believe first time I heard it from those large TVs, the CRT ones, uh, they were making this noise non-stop. I could hear that it's working even when it's on mute from the next room. And besides the TV, I actually heard it from the computers. Um, I was first introduced to the coil wine in laptops by a company called Dell, uh, which is famous for producing ridiculously inexpensive equipment with amazing characteristics. And Dell computers sound like this. And their power supplies sound like this. So what's happening with Dell computers is that they pack a lot of power into a very small package and uh, they sell it at a very low price. And the only way Dell can do this is by spending less time than Apple uh, planning all the circuitry and by buying as cheap components as possible. And this is why Dell computers are so much noisier than Apple computers. And actually, in my experience, this is the very first MacBook Pro from which I'm hearing this coil whine. And actually, you can hear the sound not only from the laptops or TVs, coil whining is actually everywhere around us like on the street light for instance. And this hum is caused by the same effect. So what is this effect? Scientifically speaking, it's called electromagnetically induced acoustic noise. 
you may remember this from school, but uh, whenever you have electrical current represented by this battery, a magnet represented by these three magnets actually in this case, and a conductor. If you put these three things together, the conductor will start moving. And uh, if you'll change the direction of electric current, or if you reverse the magnetic field, it will actually start moving in the opposite direction. So what's happening in these laptops, especially the modern ones, they try to pack as much energy as possible into this really slim case. So, so the currents inside of these laptops are just enormous. And the frequencies at which it operates, which includes also the power supply circuitry, those frequencies are very high. So instead of moving in one direction, uh, the conductors, especially in components called coils, they start oscillating. They move in one direction and then another, and this happens with the frequency of several kilohertz or oscillations per second. And when these conductors start to oscillate, two things happen. They'll be either held in place and very well muted in high quality components, or they'll start buzzing. They'll start moving and producing this high-pitched noise. This is the most basic explanation of what's causing this coil whine, but besides these electromagnetic effects, there are also other forces in place, and there are also electrostatic effects and piezoelectric effects that also generate sounds you probably do not want to hear from the laptop. So in case of MacBook Pro or virtually any other laptop, there are four main sources of this coil whine. And the main source is the power supply. This is the part of the laptop which has the highest density of coils of various sizes. And in the case of this specific MacBook Pro, uh, the power supply is actually absolutely silent. Apple did a great job creating this power supply. It's very small, it's very lightweight, and it's absolutely silent. Uh, the second part of the computer that produces most coil whine is the GPU, graphics processing unit. And it also has a lot of power conversion happening between different parts of the GPU, and uh, those components have coils. And this is why most gamers are probably laughing at me, because they knew about coil wine way before me. The third source of the coil wine is kind of unusual. Uh, CPU used to be not the source of the coil wine, uh, but then starting from some point, uh, people started reporting that they're hearing this hissing sound from the CPU. And the later, Intel actually confirmed that the newest Intel CPUs, they make this sound uh, when the processor switches between different power saving states, so-called C-state switching. So yes, CPU now produces this sound as well. And finally, a very unusual source is the SSD, solid state drive. Um, and again, solid state drives used to be absolutely silent, especially comparing to the hard disk drives. But if you search YouTube, you'll actually find a few people recording the sound uh, made by the SSDs, and it's just super loud. And in the case of this specific MacBook Pro, uh, when I was running performance tests, I believe that the most coil wine is coming from the CPU and SSD. I didn't hear any coil wine from the graphics card, but very likely it's happening because when I was running Cinebench, the fans were spinning like crazy, and most likely the sound of spinning fans just overpowered the sound of coil wine. So is it dangerous? After all, when you hear unusual sounds from the engine in your car, that typically means something very bad and very expensive. Not so much in this case. Uh, the coil wine is completely harmless, and if you can live with this sound, then this sound will cause no damage to any components of the computer. So coil wine is basically harmless. However, if your work requires a very high level of concentration, and you prefer to work in the night when it's absolutely silent around you, so that you can focus on what you're doing, this sound can be very, very, very annoying. Anyway, so what can you do about this problem? Uh, first of all, welcome to 2020. Apple released this computer around the same time when COVID-19 started disrupting supply chains all around the world, starting from China. And uh, there is a good chance that Apple is just unable to find good components for this laptop. 
and uh, there is a chance that uh, in a year when hopefully everything will settle down and uh, Apple will be able to source quality components for the new batches of this laptop um, then you'll be able to find and buy a laptop without this problem. Second, a few weeks ago a Stack Exchange user with nickname Adam and that's pretty much everything we know about him uh, published an interesting research. Uh, he demonstrated that if you'll keep your peripherals and keep charging your laptop from the left side, uh, this will cause the computer to slow down. Uh, why this is happening is because uh, the processes like charging increases the temperature of the laptop. And when this increase is happening on the left side, the kernel process starts consuming a lot more CPU cycles than when this heating is happening on the right side. So he recommended charging the laptop from the right side and connecting peripherals as well. What I noticed is that if you connect your power supply to the right side, this will actually reduce the coil wine as well. And I'm not sure why this is happening. It could be because there is different set of components on the right side, or maybe this is an indirect effect of CPU being less overloaded with a kernel task, but this definitely helps. And finally, you can just wait. Eventually you will grow old and you will lose the ability to hear high frequency sounds and then your laptop will finally become perfect. Well, I'm just kidding. You only need to wait for a few days. Let me explain why when we talk about the performance. Let's talk about the performance. Like I said before, when I got my horrible, horrible benchmark results, uh, there was nothing installed on this laptop besides the two benchmarking programs, Geekbench 5 and Cinebench R20. However, do you remember the screen where you entered your iCloud credentials during the setup? Or perhaps you are installing this computer from a backup? Entering the iCloud ID and the password caused a long chain of events to happen. First of all, your laptop started downloading all your documents, all your photos, all your videos. And then, if you're importing from an older version from photos, uh, your computer started converting the data into the new format. And this started to happen with both photos and videos. That's a lot of CPU power being spent on all these operations. And this is a lot of access to the SSD drive. And this is why during the first few days after you initially set up your computer, it's actually doing a lot of background work. And if you install your computer from a backup or from another computer, then your Spotlight started indexing all the data that you copy to this computer. And that's also CPU intensive work. And that's also a lot of operations with a SSD drive. So if you'll give your laptop a few days, it will finish all these operations and it will start working a lot better because there will be a lot less access to the SSD and there will be fewer CPU cycles spent processing all the data during the initial setup. It's kind of like your setup is still going on for the next few days after you thought it's over. And in combination, all these processes uh, cause not only extended coil wind both in SSD and CPU, but they also slow down your computer. So if you want to get absolutely fantastic though, totally impractical performance benchmarks, you need to do a few steps in order to prepare your laptop for those. First, put it on a stand like this one. If you have air circulating underneath the laptop, you'll get much better heat dissipation and this will keep your CPU running at high frequency for much longer. Then go to settings, Apple ID and disable photos and iDrive in the iCloud settings. You can keep the other settings in iCloud only because they don't take too many CPU cycles to perform or require a lot of input output to your solid state drive. Quit all applications except for the Geekbench. And if you're using a free version of Geekbench, I, I don't know how the paid one works, but the free version actually opens Safari to show you the results. And uh, you can keep Safari open, but uh, if you do so, close all tabs and minimize it. Uh, give your laptop some time to cool down. Um, if you're working on something CPU intensive, then it probably got hot. So if you'll give it a few minutes to cool down, um, it will come closer to room temperature. And if you want absolutely record-breaking benchmarks, you can actually put it on top of AC vent and the air conditioning will cool it down to freezing temperatures so you'll get even better results. Uh, I'm not doing this here, but this is how you can get results even better than mine. And now we're ready to run the Geekbench and uh, let's see what we'll get. 
just a few seconds. And here is our result. Enjoy. My point is this. Um, if you think that somebody else's laptop is so much better and it has so much better performance and it's so much quieter, just give your laptop a few days. Uh, your iCloud account will get synced, your photos will get processed, and your laptop will be amazing. And uh, if you want to compare benchmarks with somebody else, then compare apples to apples. Um, ask the person at what temperature the tests were performed and uh, what kind of software was running at the moment of the test and uh, how many photos this person has in iCloud accounts and so on. All these small things actually matter. You can even ask what port the power supply was plugged into because as we saw in this example it actually does matter. I got this laptop a few weeks ago and I was ready to return it the day I set it up. It was just plagued with the problems. But now, a few weeks later, I'm actually totally happy with it. The performance is amazing, the amount of RAM and storage I can configure it with is just mind-blowing, and I finally can do tasks that I wasn't able to do effectively with my 2016 model. The crash stopped after I turned off the graphics switching and the power nap, and the rumors are that Apple is working on the new update to Catalina that will fix this issue with the power nap, and I will be finally able to enable it even though I'm not going to do this, I never actually used this feature. I verified that this laptop's performance is not worse than Geekbench's average for laptops of this kind and maybe a little bit better, so it's definitely not a lemon. And as for the hissing sound, um, after I started charging from the right side of the laptop and the iCloud finished synchronization, I rarely hear this sound at all. So all in all, it's a great model and I would highly recommend it to anyone considering this type of upgrade. Thank you very much guys and uh, see you in the next episode, bye! Oh, by the way, I almost forgot, there is one more thing. You probably noticed this plastic contraption on the left side of this uh, stand. Let me actually show you this separately from the laptop. Uh, so what it does is it solves a very annoying problem with the USB-C connectors. They wear off with time and uh, the connection uh, becomes very unstable. And uh, this is the left side of the laptop, this is where I'm plugging all the drives and uh, when this connection gets a little bit wobbly, the drives get disconnected. And uh, if you guys worked with MacBook Pros for some time, then you probably got annoyed of this problem as well. So what I did is um, I used double-sided tape and uh, I attached this piece of plastic over here so that I can prop the cable against the laptop body and uh, now it's fixed in place.